I'm Chris Berman. Let's get straight to the action. In our first game this week, we had the Raiders come away with a come away with a seven point win. The Bengals won this contest, but will stay at the first place in the AFC North. In a long-standing NFC rivalry, we had the Cowboys pick up their eighth win of the year. Charles Lee had a stellar game, but all said and done, his performance wasn't enough to lift his team to a victory. Brett Favre took to the air for over 300 yards and helped his Packers beat the Vikings. In upstate New York, Buffalo, we had the Bills lose by a narrow five-point margin. Falcons, Saints. Aaron Brooks is barking signals at the five-yard line. Always tough to move in there. His favorite target, the tight end. Boy, does he get open again. Touchdown. The Saints go on to win this by the final score of 28 to 24. Over at M&T Stadium, we had the Ravens get nipped by three points. The Panthers' defense held their opponents to under 150 passing yards in their win at 3Com Park. The Chiefs won at home and finished their season by giving the crowd something to cheer about. The Broncos won this contest, but will stay at the second place in the AFC West. We had an interesting free agency pickup of note here. Trey's got the lowdown for it. Trey? All right, Chris. Let's switch gears and talk about players that will have new homes in the National Football League as free agency continues to play such a huge role in determining a team's makeup. Gibbs is on the move as he gets a contract for what can only be referred to as crazy money. Six years, $7.4 million. On top of that, a $2.2 million signing bonus. Darnell Dockett is on the move as well as he signs a three-year contract with the Titans. Jeff Posey will be playing his football elsewhere, though perhaps not for as much as he would have liked. $1.0 million. This guy is on the move as well as he signs a three-year contract with the Saints. This week had some big injuries, and we'll get to all of them, but we're going to start right here. Darren Howard is arguably the biggest name on this list. It's a broken arm, and the doctors are saying he'll be out for the rest of the regular season. Now, on to even bigger news, as you may have already heard. Derek Mason will miss the remainder of the year, and this is a big blow to this passing game because he was obviously a main target. So that'll do it for now. Chris, let's send it back to you. Browns, Eagles. Terrell Owens ready to go at the 16-yard line. Makes a move, spins, he's got daylight. Beautiful pass. Boy, did that look easy for the Titans. The Eagles win this one by the final score of 20 to 13. Ike Hilliard stepped it up this week and gave his team some added firepower for the win. Richard Seymour had one and a half sacks and helped his Patriots beat the Rams. At the home of the Indy 500, we had the Colts edge their way to a narrow three-point win. And in our final game, we had the Seahawks come away victorious. All right, Chris, thanks. All right, folks, our playoff picture has now been officially finalized. So let's take a look at it now, shall we? We'll begin with a look at the AFC. And now checking things out over in the NFC playoff race. So the playoff matchups are set in stone and we should have a few games that put the wild into wild card weekend. And that'll do it from here. Chris, let's send it back over to you. And then there were 12, the playoffs right around the corner which means it's time for our regular season awards. But first, my primetime players. The final round of game balls go to these Warriors, each with a standout performance in the final game of the regular season. All right, as promised, here's a look at this year's best of the best, our season-ending NFL award. Peyton Manning, without a doubt, is going to take home the hardware in this one. You see the numbers on your screen, but numbers really don't tell the whole story. Leadership, work ethic, love of the game, that's what truly makes him stand out. He had, without question, the best year of anyone. Donovan McNabb was got to be our choice for Offensive Player of the Year, and you've got to be hard-pressed to find better numbers than that. Obviously, give a lot of credit to the rest of the offense, but this is the guy that was driving the car, so to speak. Ray Lewis gets the nod as our Defensive Player of the Year. I think when you look at this award, you think of guys that can really excel against either the run or the pass, but this guy can do both. What a year he had. 
Nichols comes away with the Offensive Rookie of the Year award. Well, being thrown into the starting running back position straight out of college, all right, it raised some questions, but he silenced everyone with nothing short of a remarkable season. Cooper was our Defensive Rookie of the Year. Hard to think of any young linebacker with better instincts for the football than he has. He wins it in a landslide. Corey Dillon ran away with the rushing title this year. Talk about a threat out of the backfield, my friends. Finesse, speed, a surprising amount of power, which he used to bowl over the few who actually managed to lay a finger on him. What a year. That'll do it, sports fans. I'm Chris Berman, and thanks so much for joining us here in the Bristol studios. We'll see you next week right here on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.